Hi, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Horasis Asia Meeting 2021. My name is Diana Sabrain, CEO and co-founder of OneAgrix, and today I will be moderating the panel Compensating for Lost Tourism. It is my great pleasure to welcome you three esteemed panelists. We have here Dinesh Damija, founder and chairman of Copper Beach Group, United Kingdom, and he is also the founder of ebookers.com, the first company to use the internet for travel in Europe. And we can know more about that much later in our panel. And then we have here um, Genvi Goto, Chief Executive Officer of Kotona Inc. in Japan. And we have Antonio Cantala Piedra, founder and CEO of Universe in Spain. Now, let me, um, before we move on, let me discuss about the motion that we are discussing today. Now, the UN Conference on Trade and Development suggests over four trillion will be lost by the tourism sector from 2020 through 2021. It is worse than they expected, with Southeast Asia suffering a slum of 7% in local GDP. How might governments support the direct losses and in supportive sectors like the food and beverages sectors? How to protect the newly out of work in the unskilled labor force? Now, let's begin with Dinesh. Dinesh, can you hear your thoughts? Um, give, us, give us your thoughts in two to three minutes. Thank you, Diana. Uh, the topic is compensating for lost tourism. But let's just look at what's been happening in the last two years. Uh, travel has reduced by 60%. And this reduction in travel takes various forms. For example, overnight business travel is down because of Teams and Zoom. Uh, a reduction of office space. Uh, and, and some companies are selling or getting out. I know two companies who've sold worldwide. Uh, they have uh, 60,000 employees, uh, half their properties. Reduction of rents by 30% sometimes for landlords. So, for example, I have a, a friend who has 18 restaurants in London he went systematically to each landlord and reduced the rent by 50 percent uh, because uh, and, and, and the threat to the landlord was we will not uh, we will move out of your premises if you don't do this. Uh, lo longer stays for a month are becoming more popular. Uh, and this is because people then don't want to travel one week after another to different places. Uh, some other things that are happening, larger and more airy properties will go up in value. Flexible working to keep talent. Uh, electric and hydrogen powered aircraft, buses, ships are going up. And the result is noisy traffic areas and areas near airports going up in value. Trade between countries will create new jobs thus take some of the unemployment created by travel or in the travel sector. Large markets like India could do a protectionist Chinese model like Alibaba and others. Uh, and government offices must remain open 24 seven because everything's moving towards technology. These are some of the things uh, that I would like to start off with and come back to you, Diana, afterwards. Thank you very much, Dinesh. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, Antonio. Yeah, thank you very much. So um, I think nobody knows uh, what, what is going to really happen, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, the, the, the lost tourism. Um, um, to be honest, I think that it's, uh, you know, the, the, the use of technology, the uh, intensive use of technology is something that we're going to see. Uh, automation, by all means. And probably we're going to see how, uh, uh, you know, a certain type of jobs are going to um, change completely. Probably we're going to have more jobs for developers, for uh, branded content uh, people uh, working in metaverse, in, uh, you know, applications, internet. But we're going to see that um, certain type of jobs uh, um, are going to be lost forever, you know. 
manual jobs or uh, non-qualified jobs. So, but I don't know if uh, that uh, change is going to mathematically compensate the jobs lost, you know, the, the certain type of jobs we've seen uh, along the years, you know, uh, last decade, you know. But but it, it's a challenge for, for everybody. What I know is that um, we need another type of tourism. You know, we need to really have a, a better density in cities in terms of by all means, less cars, you know, people interacting to each other uh, and, and coming up with, with uh, more... Uh, you know, uh, creative conversations and proposals. And for that reason, and especially to to uh, to cut down on red tape and bureaucracy, we need to really wisely use technology and platforms uh, to 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 offer um, a new um, proposal, much more concentrated on experiences. Um, you know, in comparison uh, with the past. Thank you very much, Antonio. And um, now to you, Jenry. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with Antonio. Yeah, uh, technology is very key to the to the industry. Um, first of all, um, yeah, I'd like to introduce my background. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and uh, my uh, previous job was a the founder CEO of Kenko.com. That is a first and the largest online drugstore in Japan for 20 years. And uh, after I sold it, um, I started uh, uh, the Kototsuna. This is a travel tech company. Um, we are now um, providing a SaaS service by using a uh, multi uh, multilingual translation service on chat platform. And especially we are now uh, focusing on uh, hospitality industries. Um, in the in the hotels, uh, we sub, um, we offer the service the multilingual chat between guest room and staff, um, so they can communicate either each other uh, without uh, language barriers. And um, from this point of view, um, and and also yeah, and and my from my perspective. Yeah, our industry experience and the very low demand and high supply. And in the consequence, uh, the industry lost lots and lots of jobs. And, uh, but um, we are now experienced the uh, corona will be over. And uh, so the, I hope that the revenge tourism will come soon. Um, in that case, we will see the radical turnaround to high demand and low supply. And, um, but I think that uh, we already lost the many, many manpower. So it is difficult to increase manpower uh, immediately in the, in the industry. So the, in that case, I believe that uh, technology is a very, very key to save this situation. Thank you, Jen Jenry. So I'm hearing from the three of you, uh, technology and innovation. And now this would then, and, and then Dinesh, just now you mentioned about you know, reduced rents, right? So now let's talk about technology, innovation, and implications on the labor force, on jobs. And let's also discuss about how governments has been, um, you know, helping this. Now, maybe Dinesh, can, can, we, can we get your views on how do you think that automation and innovation and technology, where do you think that it would reduce uh, jobs or there is a need for upskilling in those manual labors? How do how do you feel that we could address this? And perhaps in your um, in in UK. Okay, thank you, Diana. I I, uh, I think I should mention that in the history of automation, in the history of the industrial revolution which started in, say, 1800, uh, a new machine or a new computer or a new app has never reduced jobs. Jobs have always increased. So that's the first thing. But the point that I think you're trying to make here is that jobs are changing, and people have to change with the jobs. 
that if they don't change, they will lose, they'll become unemployed, they won't be able to look after their families, pay for their kids' schooling, etc., etc., etc. So they have to be more forward than they have been in the past because time is now moving much faster in terms of jobs, uh, especially if a pandemic comes in. I have just read today in the Financial Times that there's a new variant from South Africa and six South African countries are going to be banned from 12 noon today to come to the UK, including South Africa. And the new variant is called the B11529. And it is, uh, um, it doesn't get affected by, by uh, uh, vaccinations. It bypasses vaccinations. So, uh, you know, one, we are not still out of the woods here. Uh, so going back to your question about uh, technology, it is more and more relevant. And by the way, um, uh, you know, Antonio's point, and Antonio's in this business, we are not going to have, I mean, every business needs to become, and so is January, by the way, and every business needs to become a technology business because you can then scale it to the whole world. Otherwise, you have to go bankrupt because you can only have a market of the high street that you're in or the country you're in, which is not good enough. Anyway, that's enough for me. Uh, thank you so much. And how about for you, Antonio, and you mentioned just now um, in the metaverse. And it's interesting because I know you're in the fintech travel app space and um, also wanted to um, highlight that congratulations on the two awards on being one of the best travel um, fintech apps. And maybe you could elaborate. Do you think that metaverse would be the next thing in travel? And picking upon on what Dinesh mentioned, right? Uh, he, he, he doesn't um, believe that automation and historically automation doesn't um, decrease jobs. Yeah, that, that's, that's true in general. Uh, but uh, what I think is that, uh, for instance, with Booniverse, you, you, uh, you really cut down on, on bureaucracy. You know, when we talk about, especially when we talk about tax-free, you know, or cashbacks paid by the governments. Now, to, uh, to big conglomerates with more than 5,000 employees are, are dealing with, with the tax-free. So, historically, because now, let's see what happens, uh, you know, next year and onwards. We are five people now dealing with three countries. So, those companies mentioned before, uh, for, for, for these three countries, they have uh, more than 300 people working on. So, and, and with Booniverse, five people is dealing with everything and offering a much better service to the, to the, uh, to the customers, to the travel shoppers. So they were, they were uh, underserved and with us are, are overserved because we are using deep learning, we're using uh, computer vision, OCRs, algorithms, automation, etc. So the thing, the thing is that, that that is happening, offering a better services. So I agree with, with uh, Dinesh that if, if uh, companies are not technological in the coming years, that they're going to go bankruptcy because they're not going to be able to, to be profitable. But uh, at the same time, uh, probably, you know, uh, those people are going to be um, focused on qualified matters and, and this kind of and more creative matters. So in the end, I, I agree with, with him that probably, you know, uh, you know that people doing manual, manual things and boring things are going to be, uh, you know, working in, in retailing sector or doing creative things or selling uh, good experiences, many other things. So that, that's true. So with the metaverse, let, let's see. But but again, so um, you know, um, let's see what happens with with this. But probably uh, it's um, opening the door to also uh, new experiences on tourism. Uh, you know, virtual experiences beyond the classic experiences we've been. And and, and we need to we need to uh, face that uh, enthusiastically face that. Not not just. Um, 
you know, stick to the past. Like, okay, we need the, the, the past again here. No, we're going to see new experiences, new services, new, new uh, offerings, new proposals, and uh, thanks to technology. Uh, thank you, Antonio. Now, uh, moving on to you, Gendry. And um, Gendry, congratulations that, um, you know, your multilingual translation chat system will be installed in Singapore at Marina Bay Sands this December. Now, yeah. uh, while I am really excited to hear about that and probably visit MBS to experience that, what, and since we are talking about jobs here, how about translators? What do you, how do you view their jobs now that you have automated this system? Yeah, the, actually, the, uh, the innovation of machine translation is very impressive for these five years, especially. And um, yeah, five years ago, the uh, machine translation was just a toy. And um, it is very difficult to think about that is practical. But now uh, many people believe that a machine translation is one of the key to the, uh, for the language barrier. And I suppose that um, this kind of technology will not decrease the jobs, as uh, Denise says. And um, I believe that uh, this kind of technology will uh, innovate and improve the customer's experience or traveler's experience to attract more tourists to the to the many places. And um, especially uh, in Japan or East Asian countries, uh, we don't speak English often, and so the uh, travel. Uh, environment is not so good because most of the people in travel sector don't speak English. Uh, we only speak Japanese and the, uh, the travelers experience uh, to East Asia is a little bit poor due to the language barrier. But I believe that um, the technology will uh, break this kind of uh, barriers and uh, we will change the experience and and this will uh, occur in next five years okay thank you so much um, Jenry now now let's talk about um, vaccination rates and the recent vaccinated va vaccinated travel lanes and w what do you think do, do you think it would uh, compensate for the lost tourism I see in Singapore that uh, you know now is the school holidays and Many families are booking trips to Paris, to the UK, to Switzerland, <laughs> to nearby Asia, and I, I and I pause and wonder, it, it, you know, did we really lose tourism? Right? Um, is it re really? Um, it, maybe we just took a short break. Would it improve? Will it will it get back to normal? And then now we have technology here, innovation here. So interesting to hear now, Dinesh. You talk about longer stays. So uh, may maybe you could comment on that. And also, I, I, while you're on that, I also want to hear your views on, you know, your friend um, has 18 restaurants, right? And those views in the food and beverages sectors, uh, we do hear across the globe that waitresses are losing jobs. Uh, you know, chefs are losing jobs. Restaurants are closing down. So do you think that the government subsidies are even helping? So le let's hear from you. Well, there are lots of questions there, Diana. Yes. But the... the, the let's start with the with the restaurants uh, uh my my friend employed 750 people in the restaurants and he is now missing 95 people because a lot of people have decided not to work or go away see this is a a much uh, bigger problem in that the time past has you know has made people change their habits so I went through, when I was running ebookers uh, through the internet bust, through 9-11, I remember paying out 40 million pounds worth of refunds in four days. When 9-11 happened, uh, SARS, the avian flu virus, the first Iraq war, and the tsunami uh, in, in Asia. And, uh, but these were all, apart from the internet bust, they were all short-term events. After a while, tourism came back big time. But we saw that because I was running an internet travel company, our uh, bookings went up two to three times more 
than, for example, uh, the bricks and mortar people. So, so it was. It, it, it's. It will be different. It will not be the same. Uh, so, jobs lost. There'll be more women losing jobs than men. This will also affect families. Uh, but then, let me give you a positive. You don't need government subsidies to go into wind and solar energy. So, for example, move to these industries from, from, from travel, and, and it's not difficult to learn. Everyone is learning uh, as we go along. I, for example, am now into uh, solar energy. I have uh, land in, in Romania, and I'm putting up a 348 megawatt solar power. So I don't know anything about energy before. So these are some of the points. I don't know if I've answered all your questions, sir. Uh, no, those are those are very uh, important question um, answers there. Now to Antonio. So Dinesh talked about his friend giving out refunds, and uh, you know I, I do. I am aware that Universe you do tax free travel as well. And so how how do you see wh why is there a necessity for this, and how do you handle refunds? Okay, um, this is a this is a good idea. You know the the, the refunds. It's a fiscal area game around the world. So it, and it's good for tourism because many people from uh, different fiscal areas are dropping by to other fiscal areas, and then they're not residents. They don't need to they don't need to pay the VAT or or, or taxes. So they they are they're you know enjoying or or making business doing businesses, and they want their money back. So if you're able to give them, uh, you know, the money back in big clips as you as when you use the universe, and they don't do anything else, they they are not lining up, they are not, you know, dealing with red tape. It's it's cool because that attracts, you know, uh, high level tourism, and also it increases the GDP of the countries, etc. So, but you need to offer a very good service. Three clicks, and you you have your money in your credit card or in crypto coins, or that, that is the service of Universe. And also we are using the uh, chatbots for, uh, you know, for the, you know, for the customer service uh, in five languages. So uh, not only English. So we're going to have probably 10 or 15 languages more, you know. So, and that that's the idea, you know. So uh, in comparison to the classic operators, they, they uh, need... Uh, uh, weeks or months to you know to offer the money back to the to the tourist people. So this is a, a, a really cool tool, you know, the cashbacks and coupons and discounts. And with this kind of crisis we are facing right now, it's it's absolutely necessary to reactivate the the you know the shopping, the tourism in general, etc. So it's absolutely necessary. And also another thing. So we need to for sure we need to bring under control not only this pandemic potential pandemics uh, coming. That's also necessary for mobility and for tourism. Without mobility, there's no tourism, etc. So, uh, and also, again, with technology, we can have uh, cloud-based services and, and much better services, uh, prophylactic services in which if, if we are in the middle of a potential pandemic or, or, or disease, we are able to manage uh, operations without touching physically people or without physically going to, to uh, shops. That's, again, metaverse. So if we build that kind of things, whenever we are not facing a pandemic, okay, let's, let's do uh, as, an, as a, you know, a classic way. But if we need to buy things or to move healthy, around cities, we need a very good density and we need prophylactic um, proposals tools to really move forward against this pandemic uh, potential um, diseases. Thank you, Antonio. And, and I think it's really important because now when you look at the um, COVID-19 pandemic and to encourage tourism to compensate for lost tourism, you need to lower barriers. Uh, you know, people are not uh, wanting to, you know, 
you know, pit with refunds, right? And it's taking a long time and the traditional way where they don't even know whether airlines are doing it properly. You know, they, they don't even know when they cancel a restaurant or hotel, are they going to get their refunds back? So having such systems that you have provided in shopping, for example, allows them to like, okay, I have Universe app, I have such technology, I could travel in ease, you know, with the ease of mind and, and really appreciate that sharing. So now, Genry, we talk about, um, you know, tourism and, you know, encouraging tourism. And now, obviously, with your multi-language, uh, multilingual um, app. Now, are there case studies um, other than in Singapore, in uh, successful ones in Japan that you've seen that could help with um, compensating of, for lost tourism? We hear a lot of um, interesting things in Japan right now, for example, to attract um uh, tourists from, let's say, faith-based groups. They have made hotels, let's say, for example, halal or kosher certified. Does that help in your opinion? Do you think so? Yeah. the um, For the lost tourism, uh, Japan made um, some uh, some policies. And yeah, some, some was good and some was not good. And especially the... Uh, in Japan, we do we did have a we do have a go to travel campaign, that is a very large uh, refund system, and uh, which made um, um, a little yeah which has a very stimulate the demand, and um, um, the um, go to travel was held from uh, July to uh, December twenty twenty. Uh, when uh, we are expected to have a Olymp- Tokyo Olympics game, and but we lost that demand, so the Japanese government uh, the subsidized to the industry that um, uh, we compensate for the two hundred US dollars per night for the travelers. But uh, it is stim- stimulated very much, but um, but uh, it also disproportionate. Uh, this, this disproportionate the industry because uh, the subsidy goes to the very high end hotels, and so the many low and middle class hotels uh, suffered. Uh, out was not supported by that subsidy. So the um, we need to think about the subsidies to the uh, not to disproportionate the demand and especially I think that uh, the we experienced the very long term uh, loss of demand. So we we don't need the short term recovery. We need the very long term uh, support. For to to recover from from this situation, I believe that uh, revenge travel tourism will come soon. And yeah, many people will travel uh, without refund for a while. But after that, uh, we need the uh, continued support for the that situation, and uh, we need that kind of budget. Thank you, uh, Gentry. Okay, so now let's let's talk about perhaps this would be our last topic, and maybe you guys could, all of you here, gentlemen, could share on sustainability and tourism. I would also like to hear, you know, your views on this, and also on decentralized, um, decentralization world and how it would be. So perhaps Dinesh, you could talk about sustainability and tourism, and and you know, uh, and comment about you know maybe shall we even rely on governments and would the private sector push it? Well, it's normally, uh, it, it's a private sector and government uh, initiative. You need both. So um, uh, the private sector, of course, comes up with the innovations. Government is usually a laggard behind trying to manage. Uh, but I, I just wanted to say, say a couple of other things that we mentioned earlier about vaccinations. Um, those countries with high vaccination rates will see much more travel uh, than, than those you know, to their countries, than those with low vaccination rates. This is quite important. Even though this new virus has been found, and I don't know how big or small it is, or it's just an alarm. Uh, stimulating 
the mention I made about refunds when we paid 40 million pounds when the 9-11 uh, happened, when the two aircraft went into those two buildings. Uh, it was a big strain on our business. How can you have so much money just lying in the bank to pay out? You know, uh, thank God we had uh, cash flow that we had to pay airlines, etc. But they came back in the next quarter, you know. So it wasn't sort of that it went away. Having said that, they might come back in a different way. As regards stimulating demand is concerned, uh, of course, we all know what Black Friday is or the Christmas sales are or, uh, you know, you could give goodies, uh, etc. And everyone is doing that. You can see all the airlines, etc. and the hotel companies doing that. As far as decentralization is concerned, we are now living from our homes, buying things online virtually, not in Metaverse, because Metaverse is, you can have a second life in there. Here we are talking straight, everything comes to our house, so, uh, or, or, or our apartment, or whatever it is. And uh, as I made a point earlier, governments need to be open, I mean, their offices need to be open 24-7. They don't have to have people there. And we, who wants bureaucrats? Who wants bureaucracy? Who wants red tape? We don't want all this, you know. We want to deal uh, as fast as we can with people. Of course, there are some enlightened bureaucrats. Uh, there are some, you know, for example, I know that the Singapore government employs bureaucrats that, I mean, people want to become civil servants. You know what I mean? They have a different level. <laughs> You, know, you should see bureaucrats in other countries. So I'm just, you know, giving you. Toby is laughing there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, can, I can carry on, Diana, but, but I'll let Antonio and Jerry go ahead. Yes, sir. Antonio, um, yes, o over to you now on, on, you know, decentralization and sustainability. Yeah, I, I, you know, I agree. We, we are, we are um, in front of 20, 24 7 uh, societies. Uh, you know, virtual or, or physical. So, but we, we've seen that during the pandemic, I, I don't know in specific places, maybe in Japan has been different or, but the collapse of the administrations when, when they, uh, they, uh, they needed to transfer money to people and employment, uh, money, uh, wages, etc. the collapse and, and also uh, in hospitals. So again, we need to wisely use technology and automation for, for that things for sure. Um, uh, sustainability, um, yeah. So whenever I launched um, uh, my taxi now, free now, uh, it wasn't only for convenience of people like, like with Booniverse. With Booniverse, we are eliminating, eradicating the paper-based activities because everything is uh, uh, online and electronic. And also with my taxi, every now we, we were, uh, you know, the final goal was uh, less uh, private cars around the cities, uh, collapsing the cities and, and generating more pollution, wasting energy, blah, 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 blah. So a better appraisal of resources. So that's sustainability. So with my, my projects are really um, sustainable oriented uh, projects. Um, and, and, you know, and, and that's the thing. So I think uh, all the society should be going to this way, according to the, also to the um, uh, sustainable goals, UN sustainable goals. And I think we are at some point, um, you know, make, making things come out perfect, you know, in terms of, of sustainability. And the other thing was, sorry, so uh, 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 the other uh, sustainability, ah, the, yeah, decentralization. Yeah, I, I think, uh, again, so I don't know if it's going to be much better or not, uh, potentially or theoretically, yes, but we're in terms of economy, so we're not going to be discussing, uh, thanks God, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, Milton Friedman and Keynes. So, wise guys, you know, uh, genius, that we're going to be probably using them again uh, in certain things. But the thing of those guys and the politicians using those guys is, the, is, is in the end, the same road, centralization. With decentralization, with a decentralized economy, uh, and again, technology behind that, I think we're going to see a, a, a new world in which uh, also 
when we talk about blockchain for structures or quantum computers or parallel computers or these kind of things, another world. Uh, also reshaping the society, reshaping the businesses, the intelligence, etc. And also with the coins, probably the, the euro, the yen, the dollar are not going to be um, anymore the you know the, the the only reserve coin or the you know uh, so many things are going to change whenever we have these uh, unmature technologies uh, considered mature and, and and used by 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 uh, by many people you know the stable coins the crypto coins digital coins so many things are going to change for good Thank you, um, Antonio. And um, finally, let's let's hear from you, Genvi, on how would you think yeah. sustainability would compensate lost tourism? Yeah, um, sustainability and decentralization. I I think that uh, yeah, yeah. In these days, uh, the yeah, Tokyo is one of the very very big city, but the population is a little bit decreasing because uh, some of the people. Um, would like to go to the beaches or highlight villas and those kind of uh, natures. So I believe that uh, the, uh, this COVID situation changed um, workplace and travel a little bit. Uh, before that, uh, the usual life is uh, the work and ha- home and, and go and commute. But these days, the travel is not unusual because other uh, uh, some of the people want to experience nature and work, and the uh, some of people are exhausted in the in the urban life, and and uh, this COVID situation may not change the whole this situation, but um, it changes the direction for the of the uh, uh, urbanization to the. A little to the decentralization, and the technology helps those kind of moves. And I believe that uh, the urbanization itself is not a very good way to the sustainability. But uh, the uh, we are now moving, uh, we are now changing the direction to the urbanization to the decentralization for the. Uh, 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 the uh, better life. Yes. Uh, thank More you, Jensen. Yeah. Can, yes. can I just come in, Diana, for one second? Yes, yes. Uh, you, yeah, you can um, definitely come in. Yeah. Um, I think sustainability obviously has been given a, a five year push in one year. You know, this is very important. The government has loosened its first strings towards lots of these new ideas in technology, etc. Uh, they have really um, had to stop unemployment and, 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 and save businesses. Now, I know in certain countries they did a better job than in other countries, but those are the countries that are going to survive. Um, but we have to see the jury's out. But uh, decentralization has to go down to the family, and the family can interact with the state rather than with councils. Of course, you need rubbish collection and all these things. But normally, you do your own work. And the last point I'd like to make, which was being made by Antonio, which was that because of um, driverless cars, because of different taxis, um, uh, kinds of taxis, you're going to be able to live much further away. Now, for example, in London, we have a tube system where we have tube stations everywhere. So people congregated living near tube stations so that they could, now you don't need that. You see, with these taxis, you can, and even sharing taxis, perhaps not with COVID, but you know, you can live much further out and in areas which are not near tube stations. So those are the points I want to make. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, everyone. So what I'm hearing here is the tourism sector is a very resilient sector and innovation and technology would compensate for lost tourism. And I I really um, am very grateful to hear that sustainability is also uh, one of the key drivers for compensating lost tourism. 
And now we have six more minutes, and I think everyone could give their final thoughts on um, on, on what really uh, ticks them when it comes to this topic. So perhaps, uh, the, okay. So so let's let's start with Antonio, right? Give Dinesh some time to 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 um, you know recover from from what he has said. So uh, Antonio, perhaps you give your final views on this topic. Okay, I, I think I think tourism is. Uh, it's not going to disappear, so maybe we're going to reshape the the, the you know the concept, or it's going to be broader or sustainable or different. But because especially you know human beings we need to to uh, you know to to enjoy experiences and different experiences and interacting with different cultures, different languages, different things, right? So, uh, but in the end, we're talking about especially after this this pandemic. We're talking about we need to we need to have uh, better lives and, and and happier lives, and tourism is a key driver for that. So in the end, it's everything interconnected. So let's use the tools we have to make uh, you know uh, much better cities, much better uh, moves, tourism, etc. So let let's use wisely the tools, the technological tools. To really move forward and to offer, uh, you know, uh, you know, a better density by all means, uh, avoiding red tape, avoiding uh, things that are really um, um, uh, damaging our lives. Thank you, Antonio and um, Chandri. Your final thoughts? Yeah, the I think that yeah, I believe that. Uh, tourism industry is resilient and especially um, in this pandemic uh, many people are working from home but uh, there are I think that a kind of uh, paradox that uh, the more they work at home I think that uh, they want to see some other things and the travel is real not the virtual and uh, they want to move to other places and experience it. Uh, they want to experience. And so I believe that um, the better day will come soon. Yeah. Thank you, Chenfei. De- definitely agree on, on nature. I'm a nature lover and, and digital world and metaverse. Yeah, that's nice. But I still like going to the beach, going to the gardens. Uh, so I, I could appreciate that we will still travel and it's a resilient sector. And then finally, Dinesh, your thoughts. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I totally agree with Jenry. You know, people need to, to get the physical contact. They need to learn about people. And the best way to learn about people, apart from reading a book or, or seeing it virtually, is to go there, uh, you know, hear the smells, uh, hear the sounds, uh, smell the smells, etc. Uh, and it's also very good for world peace. When people travel from different countries, they learn about, they understand each other. But uh, the other point that I want to make about world peace is that solar energy is concentrated around the equator. Uh, between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer, you have solar energy. These are the poorest nations in the world, a lot of them. Can you imagine when they are energy self-sufficient and do not have to depend on the other countries where they, they have to pay hard currency, etc.? So this will help a lot towards peace as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that's a very amazing um, final thoughts, all of you. And um, we, we still have two minutes. And, and I, I just yeah. wanted to finish up and, 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 and say that, you know, I, I do agree that, that, you know, there needs to be a balance between technology and innovation. And, and then it's not necessary that in a pandemic, we see that jobs are lost. Perhaps jobs would be different to, to, to basically you know, welcome the new way of tourism. And, and, and so really thankful for this. Thank you very much, um, everyone. And for those who are tuning in, ten, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, nice. And, and hopefully let's all meet each other in each, of other, each other's countries, from Singapore to United Kingdom to Spain to Japan. The sunny is Spain. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.